Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a review for Basketball Wives LA Season 3, Episode 2. You guys, we're going to have to sit down today, and we're going to have to have a little talk with Roxanne. Roxanne is having a real hard time. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys already know that I am ready to chuck the deuces <laughs> to Basketball Wives LA. I realized yesterday that this show... Basketball Wives, the franchise, and Basketball Wives in um, Basketball Wives LA in particular, really, really frustrates me. It's the only show that I really have watched that I feel like the ladies are just unnecessarily nasty. I cannot relate. I can't relate to them. I have plenty of very, very close female friends and uh, we don't behave this way and I don't understand it. I don't know if it's a younger generation thing that's always in somebody's face, always challenging somebody. I don't really know what it is. That is really just what the younger generation does. I feel sorry for you guys. I don't know how you can sustain any kind of relationship you know, acting a goddamn fool like these girls do. I was watching it yesterday and I was just like, I'm not gonna do this show. So what, uh, what I need to happen though because this is a highly watched video of mine i need you guys to have a talk with me <laughs> in the comments i need somebody to just really i need you guys to tell me that i need to look at this show only for the entertainment value that i don't need to be taking it to heart how ignorant these stupid ass girls are um and that i just need to just watch the show <laughs> and review it for you guys the next day otherwise i'm just feel like it's, it it runs my fucking pressure so high you guys that i just be so i just be like oh my god these girls and the fact that they black women Okay, and I don't even want to get preachy, okay, because I hate preachy people, but it just makes you want to talk about the fact that we got a whole bunch of black women on this show and they just crazy. I don't want to turn into one of them reviewers that I can't stand, <laughs> okay, that be preachy and always want to pull the race card and talking about black women fighting and all of that stuff. So, so, yeah, I just, yeah, y'all help Roxanne out. Let me know that this is some bullshit. I already know it, and it's just for entertainment value, and sit there and laugh at the shit, Roxanne saying try it you can do it so i'm gonna do a tiny review but it ain't really a review it's just you know i'm just gonna talk about the show basketball wives is the only show where all the women do are meet at different restaurants to talk about the other one they don't never have shit else going in their lives and it's a tired storyline they don't really have nothing else going on other than this damn glad thing that jackie got going on and i'm just like oh. just to hear her talk about how she's raising awareness for the gays and then she wants everybody to be involved in it what exactly does the shit even entail okay what exactly are we doing at this function that jackie's giving out the way she says the gays okay are we gonna put the motherfuckers up on a platform and stare at them like they're a museum piece so you know are we gonna be able to check one out and take them around for the day and then bring them back <laughs> and i'm just like what do they actually act like they fucking animals or something if i was one of you gay folks i'd find jackie and fuck her up <laughs> and speaking of jackie why is she always so jammed up in her clothes the bitch always got on something stretchy or something leathery her titties be all pushed up like this i just want jackie and portia's mama to go on a little shopping spree and just get the next size i know that should be so tight y'all she probably take that shit off and scratch it <laughs> for a solid 10 minutes you know you take your tight shit off and you just be like oh <laughs> then you guys the conversation that sunday had with um jackie about drea being a stripper back in the day by the name of miami in philadelphia and how sunday said that drake was crawling around on the ground and begging for money i was just like lord and then Jackie gonna turn around and, and get all offended that Drea didn't, you know, want to dance at her fucking wedding. Anybody want to dance at that fucking circus that you call a goddamn wedding? Shit. Fuck, I'm looking like dancing at your shit and I'm trying to be taken seriously as a businesswoman. But I'm shaking my ass at Doug and Jackie's uh, 38th wedding ceremony. No, I don't really think so. I don't even know why they acting so surprised that Drea was a dancer. I always thought, wasn't that what Drea was supposed to be in the past, a stripper? Or did I get that wrong? I know that I remember the episode when Drea was showing Gloria, you know, how to, you know, make her booty cheeks go up and down and, you know, dancing on the pole and swimming on, uh, swinging on the pole. And I was like, fuck, you don't learn that shit in ballet class. So, <laughs> I mean... 
I already thought that the girl was a stripper. Wasn't that a known fact? And I didn't buy for one second that whole scene with Sunday talking to her um, 16-year-old daughter and her son, okay, and her feeding the lines to her damn daughter about how wonderful of a mother she is. Listen, I got a fucking 12-year-old daughter, and honey, I ain't never got to tell her what to say or when to say it. She got a mind, and she know how to say exactly how she feel, okay? So, you know, when she was just like, and what did your mom do? And how did you get there? And what did your mom say? And who can you always call i'm looking at them on that damn tv and thinking like okay this 16 year old girl wants to be on tv okay so she gonna fall in line any way she can and then you guys i gotta say that i am glad that even drea realizes that everybody on this fucking show is crazy okay and that she couldn't even keep track of everybody's names i was just like you too she was telling malaysia about the big um you know the big get together where it was all that confrontation and just how the girls are just way off the wall how the girl asked her if she was a hole and and um you know she was just like yeah jackie got a plan for them girls i don't really know what it is but yeah they are really off the chain in a bad way ledger was like look i ain't got time for the shenanigans i will flip my hair and turn the other way and walk away and i was just like okay malaysia but yeah we still ain't forgot about that beat down that you delivered to laura <laughs> on that first season it was like the second or third episode we ain't we ain't forgot about that malaysia see malaysia like to try to keep it real calm and cool and collected but uh yeah you took the girl out of compton we ain't quite took the compton out the girl i might feel a little better if malaysia get to beating one of these girls asses this season and i'm glad to see that malaysia and drea are still cool with each other I mean, really, you guys, they are the only normal ones on this show. And I really hope that they stay friends and there don't be no rift between the two of them. And uh, I still like Dre a lot, you guys. She makes me laugh. She's kind of ditzy, you know, even when she said that she's growing up and that she wears longer skirts and she wears panties now. <laughs> Y'all got me reviewing shows with girls bragging that they wear panties. <laughs> and you guys, I really do try to give these girls, a, I really am trying to give these girls the benefit of the doubt. Okay, I thought that I was going to like Brandy. She was Malaysia's friend, and I was hoping that if Malaysia picked her as a friend, and you know, I like Malaysia, I thought maybe Malaysia would have some pretty good judgment. You know, they they about to wear us out with the cancer. Um, you know, she doesn't have it anymore, but it seemed like that's all we've been hearing about with her and, um, you know, her trying to get pregnant. I have a soft heart for those who have cancer. So I was really trying to like Brandy, but then she'll turn around and, you know, she just say some of the most off the wall and crazy shit. I don't even know what to think about old Brandy. Well, maybe she's cool, but I still I still got to see. The jury is still out on Brandy. And then Ariane. Ariane didn't really have much to say this this episode other than, you know, when she was at the that little get-together when they were scouting the locations and um, Malaysia met her for the first time and she was trying to say how uh, Drea was a jump off for her, her boyfriend, you know, seven years ago. And, <laughs> you know, Malaysia had to get that ass together real quick. First of all, you wasn't even married to him okay secondly it's seven years ago and you ain't even with him no more and why are we going through all this although you know it ain't many times that you get to confront your man's cheat mate okay and um <laughs> i guess you be feeling some kind of way so when you see the bitch whether or not you with him or not you know you want to you still want to say what you got to say so i guess that's where arian is but um you know other than that these girls kind of even overpower her can somebody just dye that front just put a little extra dark brown on it sunday is trying to you know change up her image and make it seem like she's not there for the messiness and all that. Although we know she's still messy. Like she said, you know, she didn't bring up the shit with Drea being a stripper. Because there was no need to uh, for her to bring it up while they were sitting around talking. And I was like, bullshit, bitch. You saving that shit for later for ammunition. And then British, you guys. She is a lot. She just strikes you as one of those people who, you know, is straight from the hood. But came into some money that she married her basketball player or whatever. Okay, bitch say she gonna show us some culture and ain't got a fucking piece of culture in her life herself. She done lived all over the world and Russia and all of this and, I, you know, I guess she trying to do something different for everybody. Anyways, y'all don't know what a damn Turkish tea party is, but that's what she's gonna give for everybody. I guess it's, it's so whole, some whole Mediterranean feel to it. I still don't know what the hell that is and, you know, from the looks of, of the party... She could have just said it was a costume party, okay? Y'all go on and we're going to have some tea and y'all put on some bright shit with some dangly shit or some fringes or <laughs> and come on down to this house and we're going to have some tea because otherwise... What, what, what classified it as Turkish tea? Was maybe, was it the actual tea? 
I need some Mediterranean folks out there to let me know, okay? And some of my Mediterranean viewers, y'all tell me what was supposed to go down at that party. What made it any different than any other damn get-together with some tea on the table? And then could not one person look up appropriate dress? Fuck, Drea naked. British got on a, a sarong, and then she got on some full pants on underneath it. You know, not leggings. I mean, maybe that's what they wear. And then Malaysia got on a full-on... Marilyn McCool solid gold chain belt on her forehead. <laughs> Just like I know she can't see. Again, any of my folks that's familiar with what all this was supposed to be, maybe you could chime in and let me know what it was supposed to, well, how that shit was supposed to go down, but you know, it was just like, whatever, they at the thing, I didn't feel like getting into it, they start arguing. Drea confronts British for, you know, asking her if she was a hoe, and British was trying to backstep out of that, and then Brandy confronted British about, um, you know, well, why did you go off on me when I asked if Sunday's uh, daughter was, um, you know, what was up with Sunday's daughter? And then Sunday and Brandy got into it over the fact that Brandy had Googled Sunday's name and Sunday felt like Brandy was stalking her. And, and Brandy said she wasn't stalking uh, Sunday. She Googles everybody. And, and then British jumped on Brandy and said, you know, what? I just don't like you because you act like you all that. And, you know, you, you get the fuck out of my house, basically. I felt like British only invited Brandy just so she can kick her ass out because she already said she didn't like her remember she said she brings knives to gun battles or whatever the fuck y'all i just please help me out just help me tell me that this is just for entertainment and for roxanne to get out her fucking feelings and watch the show and laugh at the ignorance and the stupidity and do the review and be done with it can you guys do that please all right you guys so that's it you guys remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks. And everything I do will be in the bottom bar. All right? All right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.